This has easily been the most requested guide, and today I am finally going to deliver. I present to you the complete guide to Soul Hacker. If you've ever heard of Blue Mages in Final Fantasy games, it is a very similar class where you learn all of your arts and skills from defeating unique monsters, and there are some very powerful options that only this class can get because of that. And you can even hit damage cap of 10 million with it. Soul Hacker is one of the strongest and most fun classes in the game once you actually invest in it, and can excel in all three roles, and when maxed out and played as an attacker, has the highest damage in the game. In this video, I want to explain how Soul Hacker works, how to get the best skills and arts, give tips for upgrading your skills and arts since that's actually more annoying than getting these skills, explain every skill and art available to the class, as well as show which unique monster gives that art or skill, show off the best builds, and anything else you might want to know. I will try to limit spoilers as much as possible, but if I talk about certain UM locations, it may be difficult to keep map stuff a secret. And this class is honestly one better reserved for post-game since a lot of the strongest abilities come from high-level unique monsters. If you enjoy my guides and want to see more content and guides for Xenoblade 3, make sure to subscribe to the channel because it does help out so much. It's going to be a long video, so let's get into this. The Soul Hacker class is one defined by its gimmick. Essentially, you do not have a normal art list, you cannot set master arts, you don't have four normal skills inherent to the class, and you don't have master skills either. What you do have is a giant list of potential arts and skills that you can access by opening the hero menu and pressing the Y button after you have unlocked the class. This includes both a huge list of circle arts, diamond arts, and unique skills that only this class can obtain that have some really strong effects that you could not get otherwise. So how do you get these skills? Well, essentially every single unique monster in the game is tied to a particular skill or art in this list. If you defeat the unique monster with one of your main characters equipped with the Soul Hacker class, you can learn the art or skill from that unique monster. If you get the Soul Hacker class up to rank 10 with a character, you unlock the Soul Hack skill, which can be set as a normal skill on any other class to gain Soul Hacker abilities without having to use the class, which can be nice since the class is not very good at the beginning at all. It is very much a ramping class. Getting the skills, however, is the easy part. The much more annoying part is upgrading your arts and skills, which usually all have requirements to upgrade. Among these include defeating a certain amount of enemies with the skill equipped, use an art a specific amount of times, heal a certain amount of health, defeat a unique monster a certain amount of times, and many other tasks that can border on tedium at times. These upgrades can usually have significant effects on the art and skill and make them much stronger as well, so for the abilities you want to use, this is still very much worth doing. You may be wondering, is it really worth getting every skill instead of just the skills and arts you want to use? Can I just hunt down the enemies that give the strongest abilities and be done with it? Well, yes and no. While you can definitely make a good skill set with only three skills and six arts tracked down that'll give you the best effects, you will lose the benefit of three skills in particular. Attack Mastery, which increases damage for every Soul Hacker art or skill learned. Defense Mastery, which reduces damage taken for the same thing. And Healing Mastery, which increases how much you heal for the same thing. These are not insignificant bonuses, and I'd say Attack Mastery in particular is basically a required skill to do as much damage as possible with the class, if you want to use Soul Hacker as an attacker based class because it offers a massive increase to damage if you've defeated all unique monsters. Soul Hacker only gets 3 skills total whereas other classes get 7 between class skills and master skills, so the skills need to have a huge impact to make up the difference. You can form a good attacking set without this skill, but it will probably feel a bit underwhelming and only be a good attacker and not a truly excellent one. So, let's say you've learned all the skills and arts you want to and want to upgrade some or even all of them if you are insane like me. My advice for how to accomplish this is to consolidate as much as you can. I'd recommend setting your entire team to soul hackers. Set them all up with different arts that need to be used a certain amount of times, or do a certain amount of damage. If you have a lot of skills that require you to kill a lot of enemies, put all those skills on your party, load up the first area of the game, and start killing some weak enemies in one hit. If you need to evade a certain amount of attacks, set three skills on your player control character with that requirement. Set team to follow leaders so they won't attack, and aggro a bunch of weak enemies while you walk back and forth until you quickly dodge all of the required attacks. If you need to block a bunch of attacks, do the same thing but increase your defenses and block rate to accomplish it. Put all healing abilities on at once so you can work on all of them at the same time. And if there are skills that require you to beat unique monsters a certain amount of times, go fight them with your team of soul hackers so they can start ramping up the art usages for art that have to be used a certain amount. Make it so that you are accomplishing as much as possible at once to make the grind not so bad. If you're only looking to max out specific arts and abilities because you only have interest in one or two sets, then you can ease up the consolidating, like if you need to just use an art 100 times and then kill a certain amount of enemies, you can just use that art to kill enemies over and over until you reach 100. 
A lot of these upgrades are extremely tedious, but for the most important skills, they are worth doing. Fortunately, you only have to unlock the skills for something like Attack Mastery and don't really need to worry about upgrading everything. Just upgrade the skills that you plan to use, and the arts as well. So now that we know how to obtain and upgrade arts and skills, let's get to discussing all of these arts and skills. I have tested out all of them and noted which ones I think are best and will explain these arts and skills in as much detail as I can without making the video drag forever. And I will also show what unique monster you can obtain the art or skill from. This might have location name spoilers, so be warned. I will show my maps after this section and scroll over all the tombstones so you can see where the general location of a unique monster is if you're only looking for a specific art or skill. Between all the arts Soul Hacker has, there's basically one for everything you can think of that you'd want to use. First up, we have our Circle Arts. Now, Circle Arts and Diamond Arts are functionally identical for Soul Hacker compared to other classes with the only difference being that Circle Arts are assigned to buttons and Diamond Arts to the D-pad. No Master Arts or anything here, and one Circle and one Diamond Art can become a Fusion Art. The order of the arts might be different than the order that you get them in, so I don't know if it'll match up perfectly, but for the most part, you will have all these arts somewhere in your list. The first art, that I have listed at least, is Horn Dance. This is a standard area of effect attack with a decent power multiplier of 340%. The reason you might want to use this art over other options is if you're in a fight with a lot of enemies because it can get a pretty large damage boost in those fights and be one of your more powerful options. The cooldown is 22 seconds, which isn't amazing, but it's not terrible either. It is obtained from Perspicacious Oldar in the Forness region. Next, we have Dragon Gas, which is an art with a very low power multiplier and a fairly long cooldown. However, it is an area of effect and applies the Target Lock effect, Essentially an art designed for anyone running Soul Hacker as a tank, guaranteeing enemies target you while target lock is active. Not the best for most unique monsters and story bosses that have high resistances, but against weak normal enemies or even elite monsters this can be a good way to grab aggro off an attacker. Otherwise, it is a pretty weak art. It's obtained from Villainous Igna in the Fornus region. The next art is Murder Knuckle, which has a pretty strong power multiplier of 440%, a decent cooldown of 22 seconds, and will deal damage that ignores enemy defense stat at the cost of 10% of your current health, which is usually worth it. This is a pretty strong art that's basically always going to get its full damage, so it can be a good option to have in all situations, and can be useful against enemies with high defense values to hit as hard as possible. A solid art worth considering. It is obtained from Ghost Fist Rosen in Origin. The next art is Dino Flash, which has a decent 340% power multiplier, a decent cooldown of 22 seconds once again, and a bonus effect that increases damage by a pretty large 150% when health is 90% or higher. I actually like this art a lot and think it's one of the better circle arts because it's a perfect opening to a fight to get a large hit in with the full damage bonus, especially because it's a really fast art as well and can quickly lead to a different art with cancelling. I think it's one of the best damage based arts you can have with Soul Hacker and think it should be a strong consideration for anyone using the class. This is obtained from Fine Blade Faltar on Sword March. I think I'm going to stop talking about which unique monster they get it from, I'm just going to show it to the side with the Y button and you'll be able to look at it and read it yourself because it's going to get very old. Dual Attack has a strong power multiplier of 440% and is another 22 second recharge. Seems like the standard cooldown for a lot of arts, and the effect of this art is reducing damage taken by 40% when using the art. I honestly think this is a pretty bad effect. I feel like you'd rather have evasion built into an art like this rather than just damage reduction, so I don't really like this art at all and think there are much better options you can use even as a tank. Calvary is a low power multiplier move of only 180%, with another 22 second cooldown, and the effect of it is that it will inflict shackle blocking on an enemy. This simply means the enemy won't be able to block attacks while this is active. Gonna be honest, this effect really is not that great at all, and I feel like there are much better options to use your art slots on, since most enemies aren't exactly going to be having enormous block rates. Now for another really good art. Toxic Gas is an area of effect attack with a 340% power multiplier, which is decent, and has a 19 second cooldown, which is also decent. The bonus effect is what's really good about this art, though. It applies Power Charge, which greatly increases the damage of your next art. This is one of the strongest abilities in the game, and having it on a decently strong art without a long cooldown is very nice to have it and very much worth running when combined with other more powerful arts. Next Slice has a strong 440% damage ratio and also a 19 second cooldown with the bonus effect of generating more aggro and increasing damage to Agnes forces by 150%. This is an art for tank classes and is very strong when fighting Agnes enemies and can be worth equipping just for those fights to hit some really high numbers with the art. Otherwise it doesn't offer too much and other art options may be better. Spit Beam is the highest power multiplier we've seen so far at a large 510%. 
Besides other soul hacker arts, only one art on a different class has a higher power multiplier than this, and that's a 520% power multiplier art on Stalker. This bonus effect of this art is making the attack unblockable, and it has a decent cooldown of 22 seconds. You might think this is a strong attack, and in some senses it is, but I'd say there are stronger and better options in most situations for Soul Hacker. Spinning Bolt has a fairly low power multiplier of 255%, but it has the bonus effect of dealing 150% more damage to aquatic type enemies, and also has a bleed effect, which is a damage over time, making it do more damage than it might appear. That said, bleed isn't that impactful overall, and this art definitely is not worth using if you aren't fighting aquatic enemies. I think there are other arts that could give you more damage or tools to use. Dino Storm is an area of effect art with a decent power multiplier of 340% and a below average cooldown of 24 seconds, but it also gives you guaranteed evasion while the art is active and can be a solid option for certain tank type classes that need to avoid dangerous attacks, a situational art that can be useful. Double Strike is an art with a low cooldown of 14 seconds and a fairly low power multiplier of 255% that deals extra damage to enemies under 30% health. This art is honestly pretty terrible because when enemies are under 30% health, you're probably in a chain attack already, and the power multiplier is really bad otherwise, and even if you did get the damage bonus, it's probably still not going to be better than other art options. Double Slap is another art with a low cooldown of 14 seconds and an even lower power multiplier of 180%, but this time the debuff effect is physical defense down, which can actually be pretty useful for increasing the damage of your other physical attacks, so in that sense it can be worth running. I still don't know if I would call it an amazing art, but it does have some use. Fin of Fear is an art with a standard power multiplier of 340% like a lot of others, and an okay cooldown of 22 seconds. The bonus effect of this art is boosting evasion while the art is active by 50%, which can be good for evasion tanks with already high agility, but other than that it's not going to be a very useful art over other options because I think guaranteed evasion will be a better option for arts like this. Tail Slap is an art with a very low power multiplier of 180%, once again the standard for the lower power multipliers for this class, and has a recharge gauge of 14 seconds. The bonus effect of this art is reducing aggro towards yourself when the art hits, which honestly is probably not going to be the most useful bonus effect, and considering the fact that damage is really weak, I would not run this art. Spiderweb is a good supporting art that works well for healer class soul hackers because it has a great bonus effect of having an 85% chance to reset enemy recharge when an art hits, which can be very useful for making enemies not do nearly as much damage to you over the course of a long fight. The power multiplier is low and the recharge gauge is average, but just because of the bonus effect of the reaction, this can be a good art worth using. Desperate Charge is an area of effect buff art that grants fast recharge and also grants critical hit plus on art execution. This can be a very nice art just for the entire party to have a bunch of bonus effects that are pretty useful in combat and can be worth the consideration, especially if you are playing as a more supportive soul hacker and don't want to do as much damage as possible. Life Plant is a set field art, which field effects are slightly different than buffs since you have to be inside the field to get the bonus effect, that will grant regenerate. This is definitely a skill for healers, and it has a very low cooldown of 13 seconds and is very much worth considering if you want to heal your allies. Psycho Wave has a standard power multiplier of 340%, a pretty long cooldown of 24 seconds, but it applies the burst reaction upon hit. This is Soul Hacker's only access to burst, so if you're looking for more combo coverage, this is a great art to use. This also boosts damage to Kevis forces by 150% and can be worth bringing along even if you're not getting the burst just for extra damage against Kevis classes. Rhino Storm is a, another art with a 340% power multiplier, has a recharge gauge of 22 seconds, and can inflict blowdown on the enemy you are hitting. And it also will nullify knockback and blowdown while art is active. Honestly, that's not super useful as an effect overall, and I would not recommend running this over other options. Just because knockback and blowdown isn't really that common, and even still you'd have to know exactly what inflicts knockback and blowdown to really get the most out of this art, so I would not recommend running this over other options. And now we finally move on to Wild Wave. This is a frontward area of effect with a massive power multiplier of 660%. That is the highest in the entire game by a pretty large margin, and over 140% higher than any non-soul hacker class can even reach, and an even higher than that compared to most attacker classes. Now it does have a 29 second cooldown, and it does reduce health when using it, but this move is a certified nuke, and probably one of the best options you can use in chain attacks, and just for strong burst damage in general. I really like this art, it's been a cool staple move of the Gogols ever since Xenoblade 2, and quite fittingly, you can get this from Movable Gonzalez in the Pentalus region. Predation is a really bad art with a very low power multiplier and a not great cooldown of 22 seconds, and the only bonus effect is you have a 5% chance to instantly defeat an enemy at 30% health or lower. 
That is almost as useless as you think it is. Radiant Art has a power multiplier of 425% and a cooldown of 24 seconds. It will evade attacks while it is used and will also boost the accuracy of the art by 50%. 425% is a pretty decent power multiplier, pretty strong art, and being able to evade attacks while the art is active is a very nice bonus. And boosting accuracy of the art is nice, I guess, as well. Not the most impactful thing, but it will ensure the art basically always hits, so it can be worth having just for that alone. Thunderclap has the standard power multiplier of 340%, a recharge gauge of 19 seconds, and will boost damage to launched enemies by 150%. Now, this is an okay art if you're planning to do a lot of launches, but even then, there are probably other arts that'll give you more damage on launches with higher power multipliers rather than just getting the damage boost against launched enemies. So in that sense, I think this is probably not an art worth running in most situations. Rage Strike has a 270% power multiplier, but a very low cooldown of 11 seconds that will boost damage dealt by 150% when health is at 30% or lower. Now, if your own health is that low, then you're probably not in a good situation, and the power multiplier is pretty low anyway. So even with the low cooldown, I would not recommend this art in most situations unless you just really need fast cooldowns so you can get your Agnes arts up faster. Well, I guess Diamond arts they are not really Agnes arts in this case, but you get it. Trout Hop has a 340% power multiplier and a pretty low cooldown of 14 seconds. This will boost damage when you're attacking from behind by 150%. Just because of the low cooldown, if you can manage to always get the back attacks, this could be a decent art to run, even though it only has the standard power multiplier. Because if you can get the bonus art effect from this every time, you can get some extra damage over other arts that might have longer cooldowns. Aqua Ball will boost damage to terrestrial life by 150% and has a very large power multiplier of 510%. It has 22 seconds of cooldown, and it'll also inflict attack down on enemies. That is a lot of bonus effects to have on a singular art. And if you are fighting terrestrial enemies, which is a lot of enemies in the world, pretty much every enemy you see in the overworld that's not like a machine or a bird, then you will be able to do a lot of additional damage because of the high power multiplier. This is absolutely an art worth running in a lot of situations, especially if you're fighting terrestrial life, and an art I would highly recommend in those situations for sure, even with the longer cooldown of 22 seconds. Snake Eyes has a power multiplier of 180% and a 24 second cooldown. This is a very specific art that you would want to use against specifically strong unique monsters or boss enemies because the reaction effect is a chance to remove all buffs from the target upon landing a hit. It's guaranteed 100% and it has a very low power multiplier and a very high cooldown so it is very much a very specific art that you would only want in those situations but it is very useful in situations where you really need to nerf the enemy and not have them have extra buffs that can just destroy you. Beast Tail has one of the fastest cooldowns in the game at only 10 seconds, a low power multiplier of 180%, and it'll boost aggro generated when using the art by 100%. Honestly, even for tank classes, this is not very much worth using just because of the low power multiplier. You can get more aggro just by picking an art with a higher damage ratio that has a similar cooldown. Hard Dig is an art that has an effect to inflict knockback onto the enemy and will do bonus damage to top with enemies by 150%. The recharge gauge is fairly low at 14 seconds, but the power multiplier is pretty pathetic at 180%, and as such, I don't really recommend running this art in most situations. Draining Vacuum is an art with a 510% power multiplier, but a fairly long cooldown of 24 seconds. However, the bonus effect of the art is healing nearby allies when art hits to a max of 100% of healing power. This is a great art to use if you're using healer class soul hackers, and can do a lot of damage in general, which can make you have more of an offensive skill set as a healer soul hacker. So I really like this art a lot just for that reason alone, and it's a pretty strong art with the high power multiplier. Dig is a 225% power multiplier move with a short cooldown of 14 seconds that'll boost damage when attacking from the side by 150%. As I've said with a lot of these arts, the power multiplier is really low, so that makes it not worth using over other options that can give you more damage in general just from having a really high damage ratio. Double Bite also has a power multiplier of 255% and a cooldown of 14 seconds. And this time, the bonus effect is boosting damage by 50% if you get a Cancel. Now, Cancel damage can be pretty strong, but the art is still just too weak overall, and you can get other sources of Cancel damage, and this will not even apply in Chain Attacks, so overall, not a very good art. That is the last of the Circle Arts, so we can finally move on to the Diamond Arts now. These are going to be the D-Pad Arts that you can set on the other side. Ether Sphere is our first one. This has a 250% power multiplier, a recharge gauge of 4, which is pretty low, and it'll boost damage when attacking from the front by 100%. This art has a similar problem to a lot of others we discussed, and that's just the low power multiplier. Even the damage boost from attacking from the front is not going to make up for that, even if it has a low cooldown. Last Fencer is a 310% power multiplier art that has a recharge gauge of 5 and has a 50% chance to ignore defense. 
This art can be okay if an enemy has really high defense, but probably is not going to be the best option in most situations. Hypnotism is a debuff art that will inflict bind on the enemy. This is very simple. If you want to have access to bind and think it's a really good debuff, run this art. If you don't, then don't run the art. Poison Spray has a power multiplier of 210% and a recharge gauge of 5. Despite having a low power multiplier, this will inflict the bleed effect, which is a damage over time effect, giving it more damage than you might initially think. That said, there are still stronger art options, as you might expect, that'll give you more damage than the bleed will, so in a lot of situations, I would not recommend running this. Trick Dart has a power multiplier of 250%, a recharge gauge of 8, which is actually pretty high for these diamond-based arts, but will apply one randomly chosen debuff when the art hits. Now, this is also dependent on what the debuff resistance of the enemy is, and if they have high resistance, this is not going to be most impactful. And most really strong unique monsters and story bosses will have a lot of resistance, so as such, I don't recommend running this in a lot of situations. Vampire Bat is pretty much an art you would only run if you are a healer. It has a pathetic power multiplier of 165%, a decent recharge gauge of 4, and will heal allies when the art hits to 100% of healing power. There is no reason to run this if you do not have high healing stat or don't want to heal allies because the art is just really terrible otherwise. Elimination Beam is a frontward area of effect art with a massive power multiplier of 600%, the highest of all Soul Hacker Diamond Arts and the second highest in the game after Wild Wave, and also the move I used to hit Damage Cap with since it's a single hit as opposed to Wild Wave's 5 hits. This move can even lower physical defense of enemies, giving it some additional utility besides just being a nuke. But when fused with Wild Wave, this is the best art combination for chain attacks that exists. You can do some truly crazy damage, and for that alone, this art is worth using, even with the longer cooldown of 8. Evasive Posture is a stance-type art that will boost your evasion by 15%, but reduce damage dealt by 25%. Honestly, this is a worse version of a stance that Zephyr already has, and the damage reduction is really, really detrimental to any kind of tank, and the evasion boost isn't even that high, so I do not recommend running this in any situation, even if you are planning in a, to use an evasion tank-based soul hacker. Healing Rest is a standard healing art that has a power multiplier of 245%, has a fairly low cooldown. It just heals everyone around the user, good for a healing-based soul hacker, not much other use otherwise. Shark Shock has a power multiplier of 310%, a recharge gauge of 5, which is standard, and grants a high critical hit rate on the art. This can be okay just for the high critical hit rate if you have a lot of critical damage effects, but there are probably going to be better damage options just in general in most situations just because the power multiplier isn't that amazing but it's still an okay art that could be worth considering sometimes. Bomberhead is your launch art. The uses for this art are simple. If you need access to a launch on your team or just want a launch art on your soul hacker, this art is worth using. If not, it is not a very special art otherwise, and you probably do not want to run it. Use it if you want launch. Do not use it if you don't. Jetstream has a power multiplier of 400%, a pretty long cooldown of 8 seconds, and inflicts blowdown. There isn't really any bonus effect to increase the damage of this, and you're not likely to blow down many enemies, so I don't recommend using this in most situations because of the high cooldown, and the power multiplier is still not as strong as it could be for some of the arts on this side. Electric Skin is very similar to Bomber Head with the same power multiplier and recharge gauge, and inflicts Daze instead. If you'd rather have access to Daze instead of Launch, run this art. If you do not care, then do not run this art. Aquatic Missile! Same thing as Electric Skin and Bomber Head, except you get access to Topple. A lot of these arts are very similar, as you might expect. You get the same power multiplier on this as well, the same recharge gauge. And honestly, it's just really funny this is how they handled the combo reactions. Once again, run this if you need a topple. If you do not need a topple and you have a good team setup without that, then don't run this art. Battle Pheromone is an AoE buff that will inflict attack up and critical rate up on art execution. This is a good standard buff effect that can be useful to your entire party if you need this. A very good on a support-based soul hacker if you're using a healing-based setup can increase the damage of your party a lot and be very useful. Cursed Cuisine is very similar to our other combo arts, except it inflicts blowdown instead, which I think is a lot more useless than most combo effects, and as such, I don't recommend running this over other options. Hawkshot will inflict break! So this is the exact same thing as the other 310% power multiplier and 5 recharge gauge, except this time you get break but you had to inflict it from the side in order to get break. You can't just use it anywhere. I guess they just wanted you to have a positional on all break effects just to make it a bit harder to use properly. I'm not sure. Regardless, if you need break, this is a good art. If you do not need a break, then you do not need to use this art. Water Jet has a 290% power multiplier and the standard recharge gauge of 5 and inflicts accuracy down on the enemy and can inflict knockback as well. Knockback isn't the most impactful, but accuracy down can be useful if you're really taking a lot of damage if you can manage to apply this debuff. So it could be worth considering against some enemies, 
but overall probably not going to be the most useful art, and the knockback effect is very, very meaningless. Hypno Light is a debuff that has a very low cooldown of 3 that has a chance of inflicting both evasion and accuracy down on the enemy. This can be a good art if the enemy does not have high debuff resist, and can be very much worth using to ensure the enemy does not hit you as much and ensure your attacks are hitting more. I like this art a lot on support-based soul hackers. Transient Bond is a 500% damage ratio art, which is pretty high with a recharge gauge of 8, which isn't the greatest, but not completely awful, and its bonus effect will actually charge the attack on critical hit. Now this art is a lot of hits, so you actually get a lot of chances to recharge this art, making the cooldown not that bad. Considering the high damage ratio, this can end up being a very powerful art to have at your disposal, and it's one I definitely like a lot. Unfortunately, it is obtained from the strongest unique monster in the game, Seraphic Seratina at Sword March, but it is a good art if you can manage to get it. King's Bash has a power multiplier of 390%, a fairly long cooldown of 8, but it will recover other arts 30% when this art hits. This will recover all 5 of your other arts, and can be a good option to consider if you really need the cooldowns of your other arts, because it will make them cool down a lot faster and be very helpful for some of the longer timer-based cooldowns, I would say. This can be an art worth considering, but it really depends on the setup you are running, but it is something worth considering. Dragon's Decree is an excellent art. It has a fairly short cooldown of 5, clears all debuffs on allies around user, and grants power charge to everyone currently around the user as well, including the user himself. This gives Soul Hacker access to two different power charges, and when you use both on the same kit, you can hit some insane burst damage and DPS values other classes could only dream up. Being able to apply it to everyone around you as well is very valuable since no other class can do that just with a standard art, either needing to pull it randomly with Signifer or giving it as a chain attack bonus effect. As such, this is a great art to run to increase your damage further. Gatling Peck is a 310% power multiplier art with the Aether Defense Down debuff. If you want to inflict Aether Defense down on the enemy and have a lot of strong Aether Arts, like a lot of the strongest Arts on the Soul Hacker kit, this can be an art worth running if the enemy does not have high debuff resistance and will constantly resist this anyway. Very much worth considering in some situations, though. Mini Storm has a 310% power multiplier, recharge gauge of 5, as you might expect, and boosts damage to enemies performing Arts by 100%. Now, it can be pretty hard to time attacking an enemy right as he is performing an Art, and enemies aren't performing Arts all that often, so I don't think this is going to be the most impactful effect, and you can probably get better damage boost from other effects, so I don't really recommend this art over other better options on the Diamond Art side. Burrowing Rocket is another attack with a 310% damage multiplier, who could have guessed, and a recharge gauge of 5. This will boost damage dealt to aerial life by 150%, but also comes with the bonus of evading attacks. That alone can make this very useful for tank class soul hackers, and just in general to be able to dodge dangerous attacks, and it can be very much an art worth bringing against aerial life, especially to get the damage bonus. Bubble Cloud is another 310% power multiplier, but we're going to change it here. We actually have a recharge gauge of 4 this time. This can definitely be worth bringing against machine-type enemies because of the shorter cooldown, but otherwise I'd probably pass on it over other better art options. Hydro Gas has a power multiplier of 165%, which is very low, a recharge gauge of 5, but will inflict resistance down on the enemy. This means that you will be able to apply other debuffs much easier because they will have their resistance lowered. However, this takes up a valuable art slot and is probably only going to be useful on specific setups, but it might help other allies that might be in your party, for like Machine Assassin, for example, that really relies on inflicting debuffs to do extra damage. Overall, though, this is probably not going to be the most useful art. It would be very situational in a lot of situations, and I recommend other arts over it. Shell Gauntlets is another stance-based art which reduces damage taken by 25% and damage dealt by 25%. This is basically the um, art that Lance's default class has. The name of it is slipping from my mind right now. But this art kind of sucks. A 25% damage reduction is just too high of a penalty to take, and 25% reduced damage is just not going to be that useful unless you are running a healer set where you really just don't care about your damage at all and just want to stay alive as much as possible, and that might be the only time you'd want to use this art. Piercing Laser has a decent power multiplier of 400%, but a fairly long recharge gauge of 8, but it will boost damage for each art with a depleted recharge. This works well as a finisher art, maybe on the last fusion art you have available, because you will get a lot of extra damage if you use it in that case, but otherwise it's not going to be that impactful, and it's going to be useless in chain attack since it counts all of your arts as recharged, and in that situation I do not recommend running it. Pointy Stick will deal 100% more damage against enemies who are below 30% health, and other than that, it has the standard power multiplier of 310% and a recharge gauge of 5. I don't really recommend running this at all, because by the time enemies are below 30% health, you're probably chain attacking them, or the enemies were so weak to begin with you didn't need to chain attack them, 
so I don't really think this is going to be the most impactful art over other better damage boosting options. Sumo Press is your smash art. This has a lower power multiplier than other combo arts on this kit, and it even has a longer recharge gauge, but it does give you access to Smash, which can be a very useful because Smash is a pretty strong effect in this game that can deal with some pretty crazy damage in the right situations. Run this if you need to Smash, otherwise don't run it. And finally, the last art is Butterfly Dust. This is a buff art that will grant defense up to all of your allies around you and yourself, and is probably only useful in situations where you just really need to survive. And with that, we can finally move on to these skills, and guess what? There are more skills than arts, so we're going to be here a while, aren't we? Accelerating Attacks is the first skill, which will boost damage dealt by 50% when using an art while Quick Move is active. Quick Move is not going to be an effect that is going to be happening too often, so I do not recommend using this in most situations. Accelerator Organ will give you a 15% chance for your own attack to become a guaranteed hit and to evade enemy attacks during it. This means 15% of the time you will always hit and always evade enemies. Now, I do not recommend this skill in most situations just because it is very unreliable being only 15%, and there are going to be other options better for a Defender class Soul Hacker. Action Reaction will boost all art recharge by 15% when hit by a combo reaction. You honestly do not want to be hit by combo reactions, especially if you are playing an attacker-based class, so I don't really recommend this in most situations either because it's not going to be that useful. Air Body will boost agility by 30%. If you need extra agility and you're running an agility-based soul hacker, this is a good skill. Otherwise, it's not going to be the most useful. Amazing Gross will boost damage dealt based on the amount of time elapsed in battle. I don't know what this caps out at, but it can be a pretty high effect if battles go on for a really long time and can be something worth considering. Although I do think there is a better skill for longer battles that will probably be more useful, which I will go over when we finally get to it because it's one of the last skills. Apothecary's Wisdom will boost amount of health healed when using healing arts by 30%. This can be a useful skill if you're running a healer-based soul hacker, but even then, I do think there are some other skills that might be better to use that will give you more healing in the long run. So, overall, this can be an okay skill, but there are probably better options. Aquatic Warrior will boost your damage dealt by 15% when in the water. This is a great skill to have if you are doing a lot of fights in the water and want the immediate power boost. If you're not fighting in the water, this skill is worthless, so don't run into those situations. Attack Heal will heal yourself when an auto-attack hits to a maximum of 100% healing power. Now, healing power on attackers and defenders is unfortunately extremely low, so you're not going to get much self-healing out of this. This is one of the only ways you probably can self-heal with those types of classes, and even then, since healing power is probably terrible, you're not going to get a major heal. They really did make healers pretty much necessary in this game, didn't they? If you are running a healer class, this can be a good skill to keep yourself alive, but there are going to be better options that will be more beneficial to the team that will give them more team heal, so I do not recommend running this in most situations. Attack Mastery, I already briefly discussed earlier, this is basically a required skill if you want to do as much damage as possible. You will get a massive damage boost from learning all the soul hacker arts and skills, and it's just basically a required skill because of that. Great skill, run it if you are using an attacker. Away Killing. After your own revival, you will deal 100% more damage and take 30% less damage for a fixed time. Honestly, there is a better damage boost for dying, so I do not recommend using this unless you just really need the less damage for a fixed amount of time for some reason. Battle Fever will grant you Awakening and Critical Rate Up on an enemy defeat with a 100% success rate. This is very much worth using sometimes if you're fighting multiple enemies because Awakening can be a very strong independent multiplier. And Critical Rate Up is just really nice because critical damage is pretty powerful and getting more critical hits is always going to be useful. I recommend running this if you're fighting a lot of multiple enemies. If you're fighting one enemy, this skill is useless though, so be aware of that. Berserker Mindset will let you deal 50% more damage, but you will also take 50% more damage. This skill is pretty much useless because of Aquatic Warrior and another skill called Terran Warrior, which gives you a 50% damage boost on land. Because of that, you can always get a nice 50% damage boost without a negative of taking 20% more damage, and there are better options for damage boost in this skill because of that. I do not recommend running this in most situations, and I would only run this if you really just do not have a better skill option to use. Blasting Stomp. When activating Quick Move, you will deal 150% of your attack as damage to any enemies within 5 meters. Now, 150% of your attack is going to be a very, very insignificant amount, especially compared to most health bars, so this is pretty much a completely useless skill, and I do not recommend using it ever. Breath of an Error will boost recharge speed by 30% when in water. This can be very nice to have because there aren't many skills that will boost your recharge speed just by very unconditionally. Now, you do have to be in the water for this, but if you are in the water, this can be a skill worth considering if you have longer cooldowns just because it can be nice to have faster art usages, especially if you're running like a supportive setup or a healer setup where you really want your arts up as much as possible. Celestial Conqueror will boost damage dealt by 45% when your health is at exactly 100%.
Your health is very rarely going to be at exactly 100%, especially because it can be very easy to take aggro with this class, so I do not think this is going to be the most useful skill in almost any situation. Although it is easy to get max health and chain attack, so it could be useful there, but there are going to be better damage boosts regardless. Counter Puncher will grant you a 50% chance to get Power Charge when you evade an attack. Power Charge is a very strong effect, like I said, but you can just run this effect on an art instead of this, and 50% chance is just too low to really rely on the RNG for, so I don't really think this is going to be the most useful skill, and you have to have high evasion to really take advantage of it anyway. Creeping Predator will boost damage when attacking from behind by 25%. 25% is a very low damage boost. There are better options. Don't really run this. Damage Share. When low on health, a random ally will take the damage you receive, and that damage will be boosted by 15%. This can sometimes be a good skill, but it is a very random skill in that sometimes it can screw you over as well, especially if you are like playing an attacker and your damage boost gets targeted on a healer instead and just wipes them out and now they can no longer heal you. As such, I think this is too risky of a skill to really consider using. It might be an okay option if you are playing a healer yourself and you just are absolutely vital to keep yourself alive and revive allies when they die. But other than that, I don't see this being the most useful skill. Dangerous Claws. This increases your critical hit rate by 20 percentage points and critical hit damage by 50 percentage points. This is an amazing skill. If you are running an attacker-based class, run this skill at all times. 20 percentage points is massive. That'll increase your base critical hit rate from 15% to 35%. And critical hit damage being boosted by 50 percentage points is really, really powerful as well. Even if you aren't running an attacker, if you're running a defender, I would still recommend running this because it'll give you extra aggro from all the extra damage you are doing. This is one of the absolute best skills you have, probably the second best damage boost skill you have after Attack Mastery, and I would say it's pretty much a requirement in most situations if you want to get as much damage as possible. Great skill, always run it. Debuff Counter. Shortens the duration of debuffs on self by 50%. This is okay, I guess, but there are other ways you can just remove debuff with, like, De Dragon's Decree or something like that, so I don't really think this is going to be the most useful skill in a lot of situations. If you really need to remove debuffs, you can just set Dag Dragon's Decree to an art instead. Deeply Tactical. At the start of a chain attack, this increases your TP by 10. I honestly have never seen a need for skills or accessories like this because I think it's just very easy to get TP regardless and get strong chain attacks, so I don't really think this is going to be the most useful effect. Defense Mastery. This reduces damage taken for each soul hacker art or skill learned. This is very similar to Attack Mastery, just on the defensive end. If you're running a tank class soul hacker, I recommend this skill highly because it will reduce the damage you take by a lot and can be very useful. Defense Time. Reduces damage taken by 20% when recharge for all arts is depleted. If you like using your arts on cooldown, this can be a good skill to have because 20% damage reduction can be nice. Although, as a defender, you probably want at least some offensive skills just for the sake of keeping aggro. But this can be nice if you're just focused mostly on damage reduction. Deflector Plate. When blocking, will add a 50% chance to deflect attack. This only really works if you already have a high block rate. If you are not running a high block rate setup, this is going to be a pretty much useless skill. But if you are, it can be okay, but even then, 50% chance is really low, and enemies don't do that much damage anyway, so even if you reflect the attack, it's not going to be the most impactful damage source, so I do not recommend running this. Dodge Acceleration. This adds a 15% chance to grant fast recharge when evading. 15% chance is once again very unreliable, and you have to have a very high agility setup to even get any advantage out of this, so I do not recommend running this in most situations. Drain Guard. On blocking, this will boost the recharge of one art at random by 10%. Now you have to have a really high block rate for this, and it's only one art, and it's only by 10%. This is a very useless ability. I do not recommend running it ever. Dual Horn Pressure. It crews aggro every second. I don't know exactly what the aggro value is, but this can be an okay effect sometimes. Although I really just don't think it's going to keep up with how high damage gets later on in the game. So I don't think this is going to be the most useful skill even for a defender, and I'd recommend just running an attack boost over something like that. That'll just give you more aggro in the long run. Eagle Rush. Chained auto attacks will increase attack speed. Auto attack interval is also shortened. This skill can be okay if you just really need your cooldowns up faster, but other than that, it's probably not going to be more impactful or give you more damage than other options. But having faster recharge can sometimes be nice, although this would only affect diamond arts, so circle arts would not be very useful with this skill. Emergency Turbo. Boost healing arts recharge speed by 60% when an ally is at low HP. 60% is pretty massive, and if allies are at low HP, you can get a lot of use out of this to get more healing off faster and just be more useful as a healer. I think this can be a great skill for a healer in the right situations and really should be a high consideration if you're running a healer-based soul hacker. Emperor of Violence. Boost your attack stat by 20%. 
Now, attack boost can be very good, although 20% is not high enough to out-damage other sources of damage boost on these on these skill sets, so I don't think this is going to be the most impactful or useful in most situations. It can be good if you don't have a better option, but otherwise just run an attack boost that just grants you high, flat damage up, because you can just get all the attack you need from other sources. Energy Efficiency. This reduces healing artifacts by 30%, but makes recharge 50% faster. I think this is actually a really good skill, especially combined with Healing Mastery. Healing Mastery just gives you so much healing that even with the 30% reduction, you still get plenty of healing off. And the 50% faster recharge means you can use healing arts really often. So I think this is actually a really good skill to consider if you're running a healer-based soul hacker. Excessive armor guarantees you a 70% chance to block enemy combo reactions. This is really not going to be useful in most situations. If you're running a tank, it can be useful sometimes if the enemy uses a lot of knockbacks, blowdowns, breaks, topples, and all that. But even still, I'd recommend running other things over this. Exo Shell reduces damage taken by 10% per enemy defeated and maxes out at 20%. I guess this is okay in fights with a lot of enemies, but 20% is a pretty low max for this. And there are other ways you can get plenty of damage reduction, so I don't think this is going to be that much useful of a skill either. Fiery Morale will heal 75% of all allies' HP upon defeating an enemy. This can be useful in multi-enemy fights, but overall it's probably not going to be the most useful effect, and I don't really recommend running it in most situations. Grace of the Land will reduce damage taken by allies in a fixed radius by 30%. This is a very nice party support ability, and can be very useful on a healer or a defender alike. Having strong damage reduction for your entire party if they are close enough to you can be a very strong effect, so I do recommend running this in a lot of situations if you want to have this effect. Healing Mastery, basically required if you're running a healer, gives you very, very powerful heals, and is very strong if you have all of these Soul Hacker arts and skills. So definitely run it if you do. Heavy Armor increases physical defense and easy defense by 10 percentage points. Now, 10 percentage points can be very nice. That's pretty good damage reduction overall for both physical and ether attacks, and is something to consider just because it is free as a skill that you would have at all times. There are other better sources of damage reduction, but they are more conditional, so just being able to always have this extra 10% reduction can be nice. Hot Soul. 70% chance to survive a KO with 1 HP and 5 seconds of invincibility. This is similar to the Brute Memory accessory, except it's only 70% chance instead of 100% chance. This can be okay as an effect to have, but it does rely on RNG to a certain extent. But if you maybe if you die multiple times for battle, you have extra chances of proccing this or something, so in that sense it can be useful. But overall, this is a very risky effect to run, and I do not think I would run it over other skills that are just more reliable. Instant Charge. Own arts gain 100% recharge when an ally is incapacitated. This is actually a pretty decent effect if you are expecting allies to die a lot or if you're running a healer because you can instantly get your arts back up and be able to heal as soon as you revive or something like that, and you won't have to waste any accessory slots on something like that. So I do think this is a pretty good skill to have as a healer, and maybe even as an attacker or a defender, if you are expecting people to die and just want to try to get that extra burst damage off, like, right at the end of a fight, if someone dies at the end and you're in a really bad situation. So this could be worth considering sometimes. Just a moment restores 5% of health when a buff is applied. This is actually not a great skill on Soul Hacker because Soul Hacker is not really about buff stacking or anything like that compared to something like Signifer. So I don't think you're going to get the most benefit out of this skill, so I do not recommend running it. Large Scale Shock. This extends the area of effect of attack arts which have one by 100%. Now, there isn't much use for this skill yet, but if you remember Dagas and Xenoblade 2, the area of effect increase on one of his skills, Kaiser Zone, was one of the strongest effects out there for something like Challenge Mode when you were going for faster times. I can see this being a very useful skill in the future, and something that could be very useful for just killing a bunch of enemies at once. So, this is a skill, not great at the moment, but something that can be very useful later on. Not going to be helpful against only one singular enemy, though. Magic Transmutation. This boosts damage by 100% when afflicted with a debuff. 100% is a pretty nice damage boost, but you really do not want to be debuffed, so I don't really recommend running this. There aren't going to be a lot of fights where you get debuffed if you are playing properly anyway, so I don't think this is going to be the most useful skill. Mono a Mono Evasion. This boosts evasion rate by 50% when attacked by a targeted enemy. In fights against a single enemy, this is a great skill to have. 50% is a very nice evasion boost. And you're pretty much always going to be targeting the enemy that you need to avoid. So this can be a great skill and increase evasion further and be very useful for agility tank soul hackers. Mega Shout. This has a 100% chance to inflict target lock on enemies whenever an ally's HP becomes critical. Has cooldown. Now this actually works 100% of the time. It's basically always going to make enemies target you when an ally gets low on health. This can actually be a very nice ability for a tank to have. 
I think this can be a very useful skill in the right situations and save an ally if they are low on health, but it does have a cooldown. You cannot use this all the time. It's basically as a critical last resort thing to help an ally that's in a bad situation. Mimic Technique. This reduces aggro on yourself by 100% when an ally is incapacitated. This is probably not great. It might be okay if you're running a healer and just really want to get rid of your aggro when someone dies and make sure that you're never getting targeted if things go really south. But other than that, I don't really see the use in this because if you are an attacker, you're probably going to be the one taking aggro anyway if you're really doing a lot of damage. But overall, this is probably not the best skill. Monarch's Heart boosts maximum HP by 30%. 30% is a pretty large health boost. Can be nice for just tanking a lot of extra attacks. Overall, this is just a flat stat boost though, so it's not going to be the most impactful compared to some of the other really strong skills in this entire list you have here. So I don't really recommend running it. You can just get max health if you really need it from other sources. Natural Guard boosts block rate by 40%. This is okay if you have a high block rate already, but even the face tank soul hacker setup is not going to get the most block rates, so I do not think this is going to be the most impactful effect, but it can sometimes be useful, I suppose. Needle Shell will deal 200% of your attack damage to an enemy when you block an attack. This can be okay if you have a really high block rate, but 200% of your attack damage is still going to be pretty weak spike damage overall to enemies, and you'll probably get more damage out of arts or other sources. So I think this is probably not going to be the most useful skill to have. Nimbleness itself will boost evasion by 30% while Quick Move is active. This is okay, but even then Quick Move is not going to be active very often in a lot of situations, so I don't think this is going to be a good skill to have. Nonstop Barrage grants 100% resistance to combo and reactions while Art is active. This is okay if you plan on using Arts or just are going to be using a lot of Arts over the course of a fight, but there are other ways to resist combos or just not get hit by combos at all, especially if you're running an attacker. But this can be okay on a defender class if the defender just has a lot of very highly spammable arts. One with the land will boost recharge speed by 30% when on land. This is the same as the water skill except on land. If you're fighting on land and want to recharge your arts faster, especially as a healer, this can be a great skill to use. Physical Absorber. When you block, you have a 25% chance to absorb a physical attack, meaning you will restore health. If you have a very high block rate, this can actually be a pretty nice skill to have because you'll be able to get health back, one of the only ways without a healer. So that is something that could be worth considering and could be useful if you plan on setting up your tank with a lot of block rate. Otherwise, though, if you have a low block rate, this isn't going to be that impactful. And even if you do have a high block rate, you might want other abilities that'll give you aggro better or something like that. But this is something worth considering even still. Positional Attacker increases the number of positional arts that can be set to the art palette by two. Honestly, there are way too many useful arts to worry about this. I do not recommend running this ever. The, the setup that you can get with Soul Hacker is insane. There, there's no reason to have a bunch of positional effects. Power Pick Me Up. Boost damage dealt by 50% after receiving no damage for a set time. If you're good at not taking aggro or you're in a chain attack where you can't possibly take any damage, this can be a good skill to have, although I still recommend running Aquatic or Terran Warrior just to get a free 50% damage boost basically at all times. Queenly Pride. Grants a small increase to damage dealt the more enemies target you, up to a maximum of 300%. This is really good if you plan on taking aggro from a lot of enemies in a multi-enemy fight. Pretty good for defenders that are looking to keep aggro against a lot of different enemies. So that can be worth using it in that situation, but otherwise don't run it, especially against single enemies. Queen of Mercy will boost healing by 20%. This is basically just a flat stat boost, and I think there are other better skills for healers that will give you more use in a lot of situations. So I don't think this is going to be the most impactful skill to run. Recharge Cheer gives you a 12% chance to keep recharge when you are using an art. This is way too RNG, and there are ways to reduce your cooldowns on arts that are way better than this, so I don't recommend running this. Reckless Attack boosts damage dealt by 50%, but reduces max HP by half. There is pretty much no situation where you're going to want to reduce your max health just for a 50% damage boost, and there are other ways to get 50% damage boosts that are way more reliable and way more useful. Even taking the extra 20% damage from that one skill is going to be more useful than this. So I do not recommend running this skill at all. Reserve Life restores 40% of health when you're at low HP and it has cooldown. This is kind of a good option if you just really need extra health when you're getting low on health and just want to have an option as an emergency outside of relying on healers. But other than that, I don't see much use for it and there are probably going to be other better options to run. Revenge Impetus applies target lock to all enemies upon own revival. Has cooldown. This is an okay art if you are running a defender class, but you have to be able to instantly heal that defender when you revive them, or give them a really high HP revive with um, the gem that restores high health. Overall, this can be a great option for defenders, especially against super bosses, because you really want to take aggro back as soon as possible from your attackers and maybe even healers so they don't just die instantly when you die. 
So this can be a good option to consider for sure, but it does have a cooldown. Royal Aid, boost ally revival speed for each incapacitated ally. If you are in a fight where your allies are just dying a lot, you're against level 200 super boss on hard, and you just really need to revive allies as quickly as possible, this could be a good skill to consider because you will just get extra revival speed every time someone dies. Something to consider, but probably not the best skill in most situations. Royal Charisma extends duration of break, topple, launch, and daze whenever art hits. This is actually a really nice skill. It's much more of a utility skill, but it will extend the duration of all of your combos, so you have more time to take advantage of those combos. I think this can be a great skill to have. It's probably more on the situational end, but it is definitely very nice to be able to extend all of these effects to have more time to just beat up on an enemy without them being able to do anything to you. And it can extend the timer just enough to get a chain attack off or something like that. Sacrificial Heal. Heal 100% of all allies' health upon being incapacitated. This is not a bad skill at all if you plan on dying, or at least think you might die in a very hard fight, because you'd be able to restore all of the allies' health instantly. Could be a good skill as a healer. Could even be a good skill on an attacker if you plan on taking aggro like after a defender dies and you want them to have their full health back when you die. It might even be a good skill to like stack with another soul hacker, so like you could keep healing all allies if you'd like take turns dying, but that might be a little gimmicky and not the most reliable effect. But this is still a good skill to consider in a lot of situations. Sand Smoke reduces aggro towards yourself by 4% when an auto attack hits. This isn't going to be the most impactful effect because you're not going to be wanting to use auto attacks that often. But I suppose if you just really, really need aggro off yourself as an attacker, this could be an option to use. Although I'd rather just run more damage myself because funny big chain attack numbers. Scattered Healing. A 25% chance to heal nearby allies upon taking damage using 200% of healing power. This could actually be okay on a tank that has a high healing stat, although that's probably not going to be the most um, common to come by. I don't think it's going to be useful on healers because you really don't want to be taking damage as a healer. So in most cases, this is not going to be the most impactful skill. Sense of Danger gives you a 100% chance to get four random buffs when an ally is incapacitated. This could be really good depending on what the buffs are, but it is very unreliable because the buffs are random. It could be useful to give you the push you need to end a battle if allies start dying left and right, and could be very useful on a healer to get a bunch of buffs that could save you if you start getting targeted because a bunch of allies are dying and you just really need to keep the battle going at all costs. Spiritual Absorber, when blocking, adds a 25% chance to absorb an Aether attack. So this is the same thing as the physical attack earlier, just for Aether attacks. Once again, same thing, kind of unreliable, could be useful, but not going to be the most impactful unless you have a high block rate. Strength Support. Boost power buff effects issued by self by 35%. Now you don't have too many buff effects as a soul hacker, so this is probably not going to be the most impactful effect. So I don't recommend running this unless you just really, really want to become like the best healer possible. But even then, there are other ways to boost your buff power and effects just by using the gem effects. Strike Shirker. Boost evasion by 45% when an art is active. This is actually an okay effect, especially if you're already running an evasion-based um, soul hacker, because you'll be using arts pretty often. This affects every art. So 45% boost is actually pretty massive and can be very, very useful for dodging a lot of attacks. Like if Mio had this skill with Zephyr, this would be an amazing skill to have. So I definitely think this can be a good skill depending on what kind of art setup you're running. If you're running a lot of fast, um, low cooldown arts, this could be a great skill to have. Supercharged. Boost damage dealt for each fully art, art that's fully recharged. This is actually an okay skill. It's not going to be great in like fights where you're not chain attacking, but if you are chain attacking, you can get a lot of benefit out of this just from the fact that you will always have fully recharged arts and chain attacks. And this can be good for like an instant burst skill if you just want to like one shot an enemy. Otherwise, probably not going to be the most impactful, very, very situational skill and something to consider if you are chain attacking a lot. Super Explosion deals 1600% of attack and damage to nearby enemies when incapacitated. Now, if you had a thousand attack, this would deal 16,000 damage to enemies. So even then, this is not going to be the most impactful skill because you can get more damage from that with just a single art very, very easily. I do not recommend running this. Surprise Attack. Boosts damage against enemies performing arts by 50%. Now, this is not going to be the most impactful because enemies aren't performing arts that often. They'll often be doing a lot of auto attacks, and you don't really want to delay your burst, and there are other ways to get 50% attack boosts that are going to be more reliable. Systematic Defense. Boosts recharge speed by 60% when non-defenders are targeted. This can definitely be good depending on the situation because 60% recharge is very nice. And if an attacker or healer is getting targeted, you might want arts up as soon as possible to just be able to recover from that situation. Tactical Eye will boost damage by 15% for every enemy in battle. Very good against a lot of enemies. Not so great if you are not fighting a lot of enemies. 
Very simple to know when to use this skill. Already talked about it some, but Terran Warrior boost damage dealt by 50% when on land. Very easy skill to just always get an easy damage boost when on land, and there's also the Aquatic Warrior, which gives you damage in water, so you can always get a 50% damage boost without any kind of negative side effects. So definitely something worth considering to run in pretty much every situation. Ultra Null Shield, when blocking, adds a 5% chance to reduce damage to zero. 5% chance is really low and almost never going to come into effect, so this is pretty much a useless effect. Underworld Rage, boost damage dealt by 100% each time an ally is incapacitated to a maximum of 200%. This is actually a very good skill because allies die a lot in this game, and this can give you a really massive damage boost, especially against super bosses, and it's one of the ways you can get a lot of extra damage, especially in chain attacks later on in a fight, because you're probably going to have at least one ally or two die, and even yourself, you could die as well. So I definitely think this is a great skill. It gives you a lot of extra damage. Probably the best attack boost you possibly have on this um, section of skills, so definitely something to consider in a lot of situations. Wild Tendency will grant 50% resistance to all debuffs, this can be nice, but if you're just running something like Dragon's Decree, like I already mentioned earlier, you can just clear debuffs instantly. So I don't think this is going to be the most impactful effect in most fights, so I don't really recommend running it. And finally, Wolf Spirit, the final skill. It, your own auto attack rate increases for each allies with the same role as self. So if you're running a lot of attackers, you'll get more auto attacks. If you're running a lot of defenders and you are a defender, you'll get more auto attacks. And this skill is pretty much useless because you probably want a more balanced team setup. Now, let me show you my maps really quickly with all the unique monster tombstones, so if you really want one specific skill, you can go find that. And then we will finally move on to my favorite setups. Let's get into this. Very quickly, do want to say that some unique monsters are part of a group, so you may not see their specific name listed here. And some unique monsters only appear in certain weather, although that's not very many of them at all. And there is one unique monster that's not shown on here that's in the upper right corner of Cadencia. That only appears at nighttime. For some reason, the tombstone doesn't want to show on the map, but it is there. So that should hopefully be everything that I need to mention about this. So I'll just go through the rest of the map. I'm going to take a break from talking during this section of the video. So if you need to look for anything, then look for it. I've got all the maps here.
So, with all of those lovely explanations done and all of the maps shown, I want to talk about my favorite Soul Hacker setup and what I believe to be the strongest attacker class in the game, and how to use Soul Hacker to get as much damage as possible. The character doesn't matter too much, I just used Noah here because of the well-rounded stats, but there aren't too many major statistical differences between characters. I am running Dino Flash as a starting art to begin fights with an easy damage boost and a quick art to begin cancel chains. This is linked to Dragon Decree to give power charge to myself and allies, and then I can use a combination of Toxic Gas and Transient Bond to get a power charge off on a strong fusion and grant myself power charge again. Both of these are fairly strong arts and good to use. And finally, I have Wild Wave and Elimination Beam linked, the two strongest arts in the game, forming a nuke of incredible proportions when that when boosted by charge, can annihilate many enemies and become a devastating combination in chain attacks. Now this setup is definitely made for burst damage more than any kind of combo utility or against specific enemies, but it's a very strong setup nonetheless. I can finally talk about Final Countdown as well, which is the talent art for the class that boosts damage of the ability for every soul hacker art or skill learned. As you can imagine, it's a strong damage-based talent art, especially when you have everything unlocked. Not really too much else to say about it, good strong art to add even more to your offensive capabilities. My skill setup includes two skills that I think are basically required at all times, Dangerous Claws to get a very large boost to both critical hit and critical damage. This is one of the strongest skills in the game and makes critical hits hurt a lot. And Attack Mastery, which gives a massive boost to Soul Hacker when you have all the abilities unlocked. The final slot can be a number of different things. Terran Warrior is easy to slap on for a nice 50% boost in most situations no matter what, but Underworld Rage is a great ability in boss fights that can give you some insane damage since there will likely be a death or two against super bosses or strong enemies. There are some other options you can consider, but this is just what I liked running as an attacker. Gem setup is pretty standard, just the three strongest boost of damage you can get. This is probably a stupid setup to run truthfully because there is a 99% chance you are taking aggro after your burst combo, but if you're running Underworld Rage it can be beneficial to unload on an opponent. Die on purpose and then get revived with a damage boost and not lose too much, since all arts were on cooldown anyway. I can't believe I'm saying dying is a viable option, but here we are. No affinity to care about in this game, thankfully. For accessories, I am running the Saturni Rings for the 40% boost to attack, the highest possible attack boost you can get in the game, self-explanatory to hurt as much as possible. Lune Rings provide a big boost of fusion art damage, and arts are always fusions and chain attacks, and it's very easy to get fusions outside of chain attacks as well, to always get a strong damage boost on your arts. The last slot is variable. Gust Bracelet is excellent against weaker unique monsters you may be hunting or if you're doing New Game Plus and want to nuke story enemies. However, Fiber Wraps is probably the best damage boost to get since you want to launch enemies for max damage and chain attacks, and this works in all of those situations. Hopefully that wasn't too much of a rust explanation, but this video is long enough as is, so I want to go ahead and get into the practical application of the video and show you some very cool things and just how much damage you can do with this class. Let's get into it. I had considered showing off like a good defender and healer build as well, but this video is long enough already and I already know everyone's going to want to use the attacker set anyway, or at least 80% of people. So I figure I might as well show off this. First off, I want to show off the burst damage really quickly and how quickly you can kind of just burst enemy health bars. This is a unique monster. It's only level 46, of course, on normal, but I just want to kind of showcase how you just instantly delete half his health bar with just your standard combo at the start. And once everything's up again, you can basically get rid of the rest of his health bar. There is no other class in the game that has burst this powerful, like the second most powerful probably doesn't even come half as close to this because you can't just get double power charge like you're able to with this class and just annihilate things. So while beating up in level 46 unique monitor is probably not that impressive, I did just want to do it to show the damage calculations really quickly. So let's go ahead and show off a fight against a bit more of an impressive enemy, the strongest super boss in the game, Seraphic Seratinia. I'm going to go ahead and use my entire burst combo and let him in instantly kill me because why not? Not really a huge deal, because we're going to get revived pretty much instantly here, but I'm able to delete my entire combo on him, and since I have Underworld Rage equipped right now, that actually ends up being beneficial, which is really funny. So I can't believe death is something that is optimal. And we want, like, at least one more death so we can get the optimal amount of damage here, which is uh, really funny to think about. Right now we're just building up party meter with this, these uh, combos going on, though, so that's nice at the very least, so we can get to a chain attack sooner and get to the really big damage numbers where Elimination Beam and Wild Wave can just kind of delete health bars. And until then, you can see these really these moves are really powerful. I'm able to inst easily hit a, some really high damage numbers on my attacks right there, like over 300,000. Like, my multi-hits are doing insane amounts of damage. After I die again, I go ahead and swat and get revived. I go ahead and go into my um, level 2 interlink here so I can um, build up the rest of the party gauge, get some extra damage, and give power charges to everyone while I can at the same time. 
At this point, I'd just be waiting for a break. So what I'm going to do after using some damage here, getting the party meter up, is actually swap characters. Something I haven't actually done in any of these guide videos, just to put myself in a position where I can get the launch combo off. And we should be able to show off some pretty nice damage here. I go ahead and swap to Senna, who is a Signifer. I'm going to use a couple arts with her to get to Interlink level 2 here, because that's going to be where we want to be to get the driver combo off with Lanza's Ouroboros form. And then we'll be able to showcase the massive chain attack damage you can reach with the Soul Hacker class if you have the proper setup. And are playing on normal mode, of course, because hard mode gimps chain attacks really hard, and I kind of just wanted to show off the damage potential more than anything. If you are playing on hard mode, you should still be easily able to kill all the boss's HP and chain attacks, even if you're not getting the super funny damage numbers. So that is something to keep in mind, and as long as you can get the combos going, get a launch, get your chain attack meter up, it shouldn't be too hard at all to um, just do a bunch of funny damage. Now I start with the Transient Burst here instead of Wild Wave Elimination Beam because I usually just want to get started off and give myself Power Charge. I didn't actually realize I already had Power Charge here, so that's funny. And Ashura also grants Power Charge at the end of this round, so I didn't have to do that. But it's just something that's kind of a habit in case I'm not using Ashura or she doesn't appear in the first hero order. It's something you just kind of do to prepare yourself for the next round more than anything. So it was just kind of a force of habit there. But now we can safely go into the next round, get our big damage ratio increase, and then start the funny Wild Wave spam. I think there's actually a little bit of unluckiness in this chain attack where I don't get to use Noah every round because of um, RNG. But I do get to show off some cool damage anyway. And I'll show off a huge Soul Hacker chain attack at the end of this where we have like multiple. Just kind of to show how really funny some of the damage can get. Since I already have Power Charge on Noah, I end up using um, Uni's Power Ring just to make sure I get to 99 there. I'll use Senna later. Able to hit over 1 million on one of those hits, and we're not even like at the point where the damage can get really insane yet. And this enemy has pretty high defense, and we haven't even lowered his defense yet. We Now we have. And if we can get Uni next round, we can lower his Aether defense even further to do even more damage, which is always a lot of fun. I also forgot to unequip my Gust Bracelet, so I'm losing a lot of damage I could have on this launch with Noah that would give me a lot of extra damage in this chain attack as well. And I think I also misclicked this round, which is a little bit unfortunate. So now I go ahead and click. This actually ends up working out because Transient Bonds has so many hits that I end up getting the 200% amazing exactly. So it was just kind of a fortunate luck-based thing there, but at the same time... I actually did want to use Wild, Wing, Wild Wave and Elimination Beam there, so that wasn't exactly what I wanted to do, but ends up working out. The thing that doesn't work out is I get everyone back except for Noah, so I don't get to show off the funny damage this round yet, but he's all primed and ready for the final Ouroboros round at least, and I'll be able to do a lot of damage in that round to hopefully just destroy the rest of his health bar. This round I'm just going to end up using Tyan because he'll get us over to 150%. I can't get Amazing because I didn't get Noah back because I got the unlucky 25% chance not to get him back. So we only get a Bravo. Sad. We don't get the as much damage ratio as we could have gotten. But 12, 1248% damage ratio is still pretty good. And Noah should annihilate the rest of this health bar without any issues whatsoever. I could use my tanks here to get some extra damage in. But there's really no point, because I already know Noah will be able to kill with no issues whatsoever. So I'm just going to set up Power Charge, and let the attack buff, and then let Wild Wave do its thing. Over a million per crit. Regular hits 45,000. Over 2 million on the Elimination Beam hit, and it didn't even crit. If it did crit, it would have been like over 4.5 million, and this is the strongest super boss, and I'm not even like running the absolute best funny setup I possibly can. So you can just kind of see how funny damage can get. How easy a lot of this stuff ends up being and i'll show off like if you have like multiple soul hackers in a chain attack you can hit some really funny damage numbers and get some of the highest damage chain attacks you've ever seen in your entire life i decided to set up a team of five soul hackers here and then here's the last round of that where i'm able to get two like massive hits with the ouroboros section i didn't have any deaths this time unfortunately so there was no extra underworld rage in this section but at the same time i'm able to get a ton of damage anyway as I already showed off earlier, you can even hit damage class with this kit if you have the right setup. I hit 3 million with a non-crit here on Elimination Beam. That would have been like over 7 million if I actually got the crit. 
So you just know this class is really, really powerful, and no other class can really approach the same kind of damage potential as this class because of the really strong damage ratios and just really strong attacks you can get thanks to the customizable skills and attack mastery that you have. There are plenty of other ways you can build this class if you want. There are defender setups and killer setups. There are other ways you can build an attack. There are plenty of other arts you can choose from. There's a lot of customizability on this class and a lot of things you can do with it, and that's one of the things I really like about the class, and I think it is something that... We'll give it a lot of replayability in the future and just experimenting with different setups. I think that is going to cover it for this video, so I do hope you guys have learned something from watching. And if you did enjoy the guide, please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and I hope you didn't get filtered by the 50 minutes of talking about all of the arts and skills. I think that's going to be it for this. I do appreciate the support. As I said, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful and blessed day, and look forward to other guides in the future.